All right, Nick, let's talk about the Chicago Bears. This is a team in a bit of a transition period. They're making some big decisions around the ball, and some decisions they made in the game, I think, reflect one player in particular who will not be back with the Chicago Bears next season. I think this is going to be very interesting. So let's get into the article, and we can talk about it on the other side. This is from Bear Goggles Only. It says, Early in the second quarter, the ground caused a fumble as Cole Komet was fighting for a first down. It was clearly not a fumble, and the refs blew the play dead. A few Lions players picked up the ball and ran it back as if it wasn't called dead. During that play, Lucas Patrick came to attempt a tackle but took a huge hit. Also should have been a penalty. After the play was technically over. Even if it was a live play, it could have been a penalty. Lucas Patrick ended up being fine, but it was a big hit that took him off the field for a couple snaps. Rather than bring Cody White here, longtime player for the Bears, in to relieve him, the guy who had seen starts at center and left guard this year, the Chicago Bears elected to play Dan Feeney instead. The move alone tells us that the Chicago Bears are moving on from Cody White here for sure in 2024. White hair will make $13 million in 2024 if he sticks around, and if Poles cuts him, they will only pay him $4 million next year and save $9 million in the process. Now, Nick, I think this is a pretty smart move, obviously, with the cap implications for the Chicago Bears. I think this is a good personnel move for them as well, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on what this means for the Bears. But before we do that, Bears fans, big game, big rivalry versus the Vikings, Monday night football. The lights will be shining bright. Let us know in the comments section below, what are your thoughts, Viking first Bears? What will the score be in the comment section below? But Nick... What are your thoughts on this move or potential move by the Bears? Well, the the first thing to address, and you brought it up first, right, is that the Bears are in a transition phase right now. And look, obviously, everyone wanted the Bears to have a big season this year. And and look, there's still time left for them to win a lot of football games. I don't want to sell them short just yet. They played great against the Lions. But the reality is the Bears aren't all in this year, right? If they had been hyper aggressive this year, guess what? They would not have traded away the number one overall pick for future draft picks and then held on to those draft picks. This is a team looking to build still for 2024 and beyond and deciding what to do with white hair is a key part of that because you brought it up there's still big cap hits coming from white hair according to over the cap.com he's got a cap hit of 14.1 million next season 13.25 million i'm sorry he's got a cap hit of 14.1 million now his cap hit next season is 13.25 million and like you alluded to they could have nine and a half million dollars in cap savings if they don't hold on to him if they cut him next offseason and it makes sense because again according to over the cap.com his valuation is only about a little less than five million dollars about 4.8 and over the cap basically looks at position talent age all that kind of things to figure out a player's valuation and long story short here the bears are overpaying by about 10 million bucks for white hair's physical performance along with his age and position that's a clear-cut sign that you probably need to move on the one exception would be is if he was just a, such a special player that you really felt was a key cog in the machine, a guy with a glue guy kind of dynamic. But look, the fact they're not even playing him, I think that's a massive signal. They're ready to move on. And look, they probably should. They have a lot of cap space. They have a lot of draft capital. They can move on from Whitehair and replace him, I think, relatively easy. And I think not giving him any playing time is a good move because you get to evaluate other guys like Feeney, for example. Yeah, Nick, and I think this is really interesting too because you can see the writing on the wall and just the things that the Bears are doing. They're bringing in guys and setting pieces for the future on this team. And like you said, I don't think the play of Patrick is really the key here. I think the absence of him playing, er, not Patrick, excuse me, of white hair uh, is the key here. I think the absence of white hair playing is the key here. He is not playing. He is not part of the future of this team. Unlike guys like Montez Sweat, who they bring in, signed to a deal, that is the future of this team. Unlike DJ Moore, a guy they bring in, signed to a deal, that is a guy who is the future of this team. White here, I think he is long for this world as far as the Chicago Bears are concerned. And I think it's a good thing, like you said. He's massively overpaid. They aren't using him. Patrick's doing a better job this season. And even when they give him the opportunity to have him come and spell Patrick for a little bit of an injury or regrouping or whatever the case may have been, assessment, they don't. They go to Feeney, a guy that they're paying a lot less money than White here. So I think this is the writing on the wall for White here. And I think it just shows the Bears have a plan 
for what they're going to do. And they're not afraid to get the guys into the game who are a part of the plan and keep guys out of the game who aren't a part of the plan, no matter how much they're playing them. So I like Poles' idea here. You know, let's get the future of this team. Let's get it on the road. Cut all the loose ends quickly. I think that's the best course of action for the game.